This Hey Babe, we got deep. We talked about MK Ultra, government conspiracies, Man- ancient civilizations. The Mandela Effect. Mandela Effect. We kind of went wild, but it was all in Noah's fun. Noah's Ark. <laughs> Noah's Ark, and it was all allegedly. Allegedly. We got crazy. We got wild. This is a different speed, um, and uh, I think this episode, <laughs> I like I like going I like going to these levels with these episodes. I like Getting deep, getting kind of deep into the internet, and you talk- g- you gave me a, a history uh, like a history lesson. And I, you I fully spout- blacked out. You, you're well read. I'm a well read kid. Yeah, but and then also what also is uh, what you could catch up on some reading is on Netflix if you watch Special Weshy, my comedy special. There it is, SavileCounterComedy.com for all my dates right now, uh, including Vegas, Seattle, Portland, Vancouver, Boulder, Colorado, and Phoenix. Uh, and at uh, christycomedy.com, I will be in Providence, Rhode Island in the first week of July. And at the end of August, I will be in Los Angeles at the Bray Improv, christycomedy.com. And Sal is my father. Uh, don't be a fake. Don't be a flake. Don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Don't hesitate to say, hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey. Girl, Girl look at that, hey, babe. Girl, Girl look at that, hey, babe. Girl, look at that, hey, babe. I work, work out. out. Hey, babe. What's going on, baby? Speaking of working out. Yeah. I like your shirt. Okay. Okay. Because what your shirt reminds me of. Tablecloth. A tablecloth. But also, it reminds me of like a Native American. You got Sacagawea vibes. I got some today. Sacagawea, yeah. And is that what this? This isn't a Native American. It's a Native American. It's a, it's it, it's very Native. I would say the people listening to this on at the various reservations across the Midwest and Arizona enjoy this shirt. Okay, this is a Elton John Yellow Brick Road concert tee underneath it. Did you, Pimp, were you the one telling me they found the Yellow Brick Road underneath the water? Let me pull it up. They think it's the road to Atlantis and in, in the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. How wild is that? At the bottom is of the Pacific real? Ocean. If Pimps says it's real, I, I I believe it. I've declared it's real. Pimps declared it's real. You know, <laughs> isn't the, it a Greek mythology, Atlantis? No, no. Well, here's the thing. I've listened to a lot of Graham Hancock. Do you know Graham Hancock? I've probably spoken about him. I've been I've been consuming his YouTube videos. I've now crossed into that. People world. Don't really don't call him Graham Cock. But Graham Cock. Yeah. No, so, I don't know him. I don't know who that is. So he's like believes in an alternative history. He's a big guy like Noah's Ark and all that because he's saying that we say that history started. Human started in the, I think it's the Sumerian culture, like 5,000 BC. But he's saying there's evidence from 10,000 BC of more culture starting and more things happening. And basically at the end of the Ice Age, when the ice cap started to melt, you would have seen great floods and great cities being consumed underwater. Therefore, Atlantis could be a real place because like these great magnificent cities could absolutely be underwater if you just forget about the fact that society, uh, uh, civilization started 5,000 years ago and instead started 10,000, 15,000 years ago. So what this is, the Yellow Brick is Road. Is he a historian? What is, who is he? He's, a, he's, a, he's an alternative historian, So, but that's what it is. Like, But he you know, has a PhD, publishes all these things, but because he's the archaeologists hate him because he's basically saying, I disagree with your findings. because. So basically, like literally five years ago, if you would have said society started in 5,000 BC with the Sumerian people, everyone would have taken that as fact. But then they just found Gobeki Tepe, it's called. Have you heard of this? No. So Gobeki, Gobeki Tepe is a civilization that was found in Turkey that was just on Earth, I think, in like 2017, 2018. And it's from like 9,000 years ago. So it 100%... Gobeki Tepe? Yeah, Google Gobeki. Do you know what I'm talking about, Pimpy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Google go go black. I think it's Gobleki Tepe. Gobleki T A T E P P I. It's it's in ancient Turk. It's in Turkey. Uh, it's no, ancient- what, 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 once you go blacky though, you can't. Once you go black, you never go back. Yeah, you right. said go blacky. I said right. Yeah. yeah. Is that uh? It screws up the whole timeline of history, so it's all up in the air. So that's what. But there's. But when it screws up the timeline of history, like Gobekli Tepe did, is. <laughs> People, the, the science community pushes back because then it undoes all the work because they were saying 5,000 BC was when society started. Now, this is saying 12,000 years ago, this thing was built. And yeah, they but, had evidence who, of farming and animal domestication. So it wipes away the idea of society started in the Mesopotamia. Sure, but, but, but aren't scientists 
and archaeologists f- assisting him in this theory because they're the one testing it. Yes. So how do they not like him? Isn't this like a major discovery for all of them? Yeah, well, the guy who discovered this, his name was Klaus Schmidt. He died. He thinks that what they did was, what these people did was, was built a city and then intentionally covered it with a mound. Like they intentionally covered their own city for some reason. And then it was found. So Can you pull pe- that back up? So people would go, like if you, you literally 10 years ago, children were just playing on this mound of dirt. Look at that. That's actually, that's open concept. It's nice. Yeah, so like, and exactly. So, and there's like, what, three and a half baths? Airbnb, it's big money on that. They were playing on this. Wait, is this the, same, is this the same thing over and over, or is you just showing me examples of it? Are all these pictures the same thing? Yeah. So why they is it, it? And they think why that is it under a dome there? Well, because now archaeologists are digging, and they only think that they've unearthed about five percent of it. They think that it is a massive structure that could have had a full society. Literally, think about how long ago five thousand years was from today. Think about how long ago that was. Yeah, about 5,000. It was 5,000 years ago. Right. Long time. 3,000 so BC. Think about, so think about the difference between us and f- people from 5,000 years ago. Now think about 5,000 years before that, they were saying there was a society. So that's what they're saying is like, how advanced were they? Right. Some researchers are even claiming it was the site of the biblical Garden of Eden. Some people think this is where they think the Old Testament was written out of this, Gobekli Tepe. Wow. But that's the thing with archaeology and discovery is it is it is it it's constantly evolving. But you have people very set in their ways that are like, we don't want to believe it because the history books say different. But it's like, well, this 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 well, disproves yeah, this it. This is science disproving science, isn't it? That's what it is. So you who who said you said before Noah's Ark? Who's believing that? So not Noah's. So they believe that be, there was probably because of the ice age and the polar caps melting people going around building arcs to get from what is now land it was covered underwater with animals and farmers and there may have been a guy that looked like that was an inspiration that was inspo for noah's ark and then that (laughs) (laughs) inspo that was inspo for noah's ark and that story was written so it's not out of of thin air i see so it's it's not like that Two of them is how we got every animal again. It's just like they were trying to salvage. Yeah, the two of every kind might be just some bullshit that a writer made. Mm. But they're saying that parts of the Old Testament were probably, they thinking if, if society is, because it's pretty much like, literally, like the thing is with the Sumerian culture is like this. We are go from hunter-gatherers, just in little tribes, little clans, to immediately domesticating animals and farming, like, overnight like in 20 years so they're like how did that happen right. how the fuck did that happen it's like impossible how are we for all this time doing it this way and then out of nowhere like that and nobody could understand why well now with this finding of gobek gobekli tepe people like graham hancock and other archaeologists that are like-minded like him are like those hunter gatherers from the sumerian culture may have found Tepe or may have found books that they were doing it for years, but then where the where did they go? Right. Where did Gobekli Tepe go? Why did they cover their shit up? Right. <laughs> Nobody knows anything. <laughs> you get so, so that's why it gets wild when you think about it. And then you talk about the Anunnaki people who believe who they think they're the ones who built the pyramids and they think they were alien people and you see drawings of them in, in from all, from the caves of Australia to the caves of freaking North Carolina. It's wild, babe. YouTube is wild. You go down these holes. Honestly, other than watching Special Weshi on Netflix, I pretty much only watch YouTube. Yeah. I, I, here's what I gather. Uh, there's a lot we don't know, probably. <laughs> a hundo. Now, right? have you ever thought about what they're going to dust off of our time in the future? Oh, my God. It'd be, imagine they just dust off like a picture of Gary Busey. <laughs> <laughs> he was a leader. He was, <laughs> I have well, such a I fun think, picture well, well, texture of me and Gary Busey. Well, we have to. It's my goal in life to have Gary on the pod. I know. I know that you know him. I know. And you said I want to have Busey on the pod. <laughs> That's my wish. It's, he's, he's, it's, he's, if it's going to be a wild episode, it's going to be a wild episode. After that last episode, my goal is to have. Uh, priestess or shaman come here and you guys do ayahuasca on, Ooh, the, pod. on the pod. Is it leagues? Why not? Yeah, sure. It's legal. I think it is actually legal. Didn't Will Smith do it? 
And look, look. look yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought I just read that like this last week, like Will Smith. So did a bunch. wait, uh, okay. did I ever tell you about the time that I found out um, <laughs> when I found out that Noah's Ark wasn't real? Like I was a kid because I went to Catholic schools. They teach you all this stuff. Okay. And then it wasn't like exactly how it was said. Fifth grade. Right. Okay. Teachers tell us about uh, the Bible and about uh, this and that. And then I raised my hand. She's talking about uh, Adam and Eve. OK. So I raised my hand. Fifth grade. I said, uh, Miss D, I said, uh, is isn't uh, is, is is are Adam and Eve white? And she goes, yeah. And I said, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I raised my hand again, and she's like, yeah. And I go, uh, were they the first two people? She goes, yeah. I go, oh, okay. And I raised my hand again, and I think she saw where it was going. And I go, Missy, if, if Adam and Eve are white, and they're the first two people, how do we have any other race? How, how do we have black people? And I had black friends in the class. And uh, the, Wait, were you doing this to be like, to be like a dick? No, I was like, asking. This was genuine. Yeah. It's a good question. Because up until that point, they're just telling you this, and you're like, yeah, yeah, all right, all right. And I'm like, wait, but what? I cracked a little hole in it. Yeah. And then uh, as soon as I said, how do we have an immigration? How do we have black? Like, black people, everyone in the class like looked up and looked at her, and they were just like hanging on her words. And she was like, well, you know, guy, like, you know, maybe like everything in the Bible, like, d- didn't really happen she, she goes the way we and the class went fucking nuts and was like what what are you talking about like up until that time they're just like this is what happened this is what happened this is what happened we think we're learning history through the bible right. and she's like well we just made, like they're like, they're like stories to help you understand values and we're like it's not real yeah. and everyone's raising their hand and, she, and they're just asking different things she's like no 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 and it was like it was like deaf comedy jam and people were like what about knowing the ark and she goes I don't know if it yeah. happened that way we were like get the fuck out yeah, like some some, five, some fifth grade. Because I was like, Mrs. What's her name? Uh, her name was Miss Demarest. Okay, Mister. So say, Miss D, tell me, you, did Noah build that fucking ark? <laughs> like they start losing their mind. Like, tell me, <laughs> it's a yes or no question, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like screaming at her. Came Mabel. We were just screaming out passages, and she was like, ah. Every everyone went home that day. Told their parents there was a thing. Yeah, yeah. No, well, I mean, well, that's the thing is, is, is I think now in Catholic schools, my daughter goes to Catholic school. They're kind of teaching it from the beginning, where it's like, this don't take this as fact. We're not saying the Bible is facts, facts, facts. We're really? saying they're stories. Doing that now? Yeah, they're saying. See, I had none. My daughter knows me. that. That it's like they're kind of like stories to help guide you through life because you can't say it's facts, facts, facts anymore with the internet. Because I'll go on YouTube right now. My daughter will go on YouTube right now. Yeah. And tell you what's facts and what's not. Right, right, right. So this is interesting. This ancient forest was found in a 630-foot deep sinkhole. So the reason why this is interesting is because, you know, we have all this stuff here. We have a full planet. If an asteroid hit this planet today, wiped everything out, we would get covered in so much dirt, soot, and rubble over the course of 100,000 years it would be like we never existed. So that's why they're saying... Well, sinkholes are even scarier than that because they just happen... They could happen on Manhattan any any day. Yeah, sinkholes Sinkholes are, you know, yeah, it's, it's just like, you know, you literally just, the earth just swallows. But we're saying like life on Mars or, you know, societies that are 5,000 years in the past, how it can just all... How can there be... You're like, how could there be no trace of it? It's like, it's actually a lot simpler than you think. Right. There can, imagine, think about how long 5,000... Again, let's go back to 5,000 years ago right. and then think about people from 5,000 years ago. They didn't have half the shit we have. They didn't have, half, they didn't have they all have this stuff. They didn't have anything we have. What? They didn't have anything. They didn't have anything we have. They, right. had, they were building huts and all that. If they just went away and left those huts gone and let, you know something Shh. happened, a meteor hit or whatever, the people in another 5,000 years, there would be zero trace of them because the earth, just take, the earth will take it back in 100 years. Right. Imagine 5,000 years. Right, right. So that's what it is. That's what archaeologists are trying to say is like, you're not giving the earth enough credit that it can cover up our, it can cover our shit up like that. Yeah, mama like, earth. Yeah. Mama earth, can, mama earth can turn the room over immediately. Yeah. Like, She'll turn it over. Wow. Just like Rayo's got to turn I, I, over the room for exa- two seats. That's exactly right. Uh, how was Rayo's? Rayo's was fantastic. I'm wearing the same outfit. I just, I actually, I, I, um, I went in this outfit. Rayo's was good. I had the lasagna okay. and cacio e pepe. Okay. Literally, they came out, they started singing. Um, they, it was. What they sing? What they sing? Uh, they actually sang My Way by Frank Sinatra. Okay. They rolled in Frank Sinatra's coffin. Oh, they, yeah. Special night. 
a special night. Tank Sinatra or Frank Sinatra? Tank and Frank Sinatra. Okay. They and then they say the um because you know you say oh we see people who are there. Who do you think was there with me? I'll give you one guess. Who was sitting with me at Rayo's? Tom Brady. And Patrick Mahomes. Were there together with me at the table next Ooh. door. And I walked over to them. I said, Tom, it's unbelievable that you won the Super Bowl last year, yeah. technically now two years ago, in Tampa Bay, yeah. in the city that was hosting Super the Super Bowl. It's never been done. As the oldest player? And then I turned to Mahomes. I said, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this to you. Yeah. Congratulations to you as well. Yeah. You're an up-and-coming guy. Yeah. And you're great. Yeah. And then... The odds that they were at Rayo was like... Was unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. The Pope was there. Um, speaking of Tom Brady, get ready for a slurry of avocado ice cream and deflated football jokes. Tom Brady has signed up to be roasted as part of a new deal with Netflix. Avocado ice cream. What does that have to do with it? Because he only he eats avocado ice cream and and he, he alleged you know and I've told you he's never eaten a strawberry. Allegedly. 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 Now, do you want? Should we try to campaign to get on this roast? Oh wow! It'd be funny to roast Tom we Brady. We should be on. We do like a double. Why are we not on the roast? Yeah, who's who's roasting him? What would you guys say? He he signed a roast deal with Netflix. Did you see that he signed a a more lucrative. Uh, broadcasting deal than his actual athlete, like football deal. Really, I think he signed with Fox Sports a ten million three hundred and seven a ten year three hundred and seventy five million dollar contract with them to begin after next year. But my thing is this, and I, I, and I heard he only made three hundred million that, as a player. That begins once he retires. Anytime. Here's the bottom line, okay? If you have any type of business, uh, any type of e-commerce business or any type of business at all, and you don't have ShipStation, you are messing up. Oh, my God. It, do you want to, You have to ask yourself a question. You got a business. Do you want to make your life easy or hard? You want FedEx, UPS, USPS. You want all them running right through your kitchen? This is how you do it. You get rates as good as, as the bigger places, and you ship everything. You get all the rates ahead of time. You can, am, I, am I crazy? No, you're not crazy. This they'll, is never. This they'll is do never. Pony Express. They don't. Ship stations wild. Okay, <laughs> it's wild. Ship stations. It gives wild. e-commerce sellers like you guys time to do what you really love. Uh, unless what you really love is managing sales every single day out of no. every single little detail. You gotta. You guys have to get Ship Station. It automates. All time intensive uh, shipping processes, so you can get back to focusing on the bigger things like your business, like yes. developing new products, honing your strategies, interacting with customers. ShipStation is already trusted by one hundred thousand okay. sellers. Okay, and ninety eight percent of companies that use ShipStation for a year keep using it for as long as they're in business. So I'm telling you, that's a wild statistic. That's great. ShipStation, if, if it's time to let go of all those shipping tasks because ShipStation can do it better and faster. Who wants to sit around doing inventory and I taking mean, all, all those ledgers and, and no. that minutia? No. no oh, my thanks. God. ShipStation will do it. And right now, if you sign up using the promo code HEYBABE, you get a free 60-day trial today at ShipStation.com and you start saving time with every shipment. I tell you, uh, yeah, you could also just compare, like I said before, you can compare carriers, rates, delivery times, and you choose the best option for your scenario right in front of you. The, the, the power to have that is ridiculous. That's and the real 98 power. 98% of, of, of companies that use it uh, for a year use it as long as they've been in business. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in, hey, babe, ShipStation, Make ship happen. And that's, Go ship yourself. That's right. And that's two whole months of shipping made quick and painless, and it's free to try. This ship crazy. Blender's Eyewear. Fresh from San Diego, California, comes the only sunglasses brand that you're ever going to wear again, that I'm ever going to wear again. I'm talking about Blender's Eyewear, people. And you're yeah. going to be just as hooked when you see how awesome the shades are. They're perfect to wear them. Uh, you... You got your... Sh I got you, my Blender's eyewear. I you, love it. You I have them in my car right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wear them because it, they weren't... First of all, they weren't expensive. They're, un you know, these big brand shades. They're costing you hundreds, hundreds of dollars. Not Blender's. They're actually affordable. 
Um, they were started by this guy, Chase Fisher, who he was, he was a hip cat. Yeah, he was selling beachy shades out of a backpack while he was a surf instructor on the Pacific Beach. Woo! And then he created this, this eyewear that's like legitimate. This is what he said he wanted to do. He wanted to create an adventurous, mid-priced eyewear option with the same cool factor as the leading brands. And Blenders has prescription glasses, readers, and blue lights, as well as a snow collection with goggles and accessories. My uh, stepson has the uh, prescription glasses, and he loves them. He gets compliments on them all the time. The thing about it, too, is because it is so cheap when you inevitably lose and or crush your glasses like I have done to the last 15 pairs, you don't have a full heart attack. Right. So right now, to score 15% off your Blenders purchase, visit BlendersEyewear.com and enter promo code HEYBABEVIP. That's BlendersEyewear.com, code HEYBABEVIP for 15% off Blenders. Rocked with pride worldwide. Wow. Look at this. We can't wait to burn three-time Super Bowl losing quarterback Tom Brady. We only went back to the NFL in order to delay this roast. Netflix vice president of stand-up comedy formats, Robbie Pra, who is the man who gave me my Netflix special. I, I, that's insane about these people. It's like yeah. he called me, was like, yeah, whatever, give you a fucking special, and then immediately probably called Tom Brady and was like, Tom, yeah. you have and, a Netflix. And, and you already make your own bread. You already make, exactly. Yeah. I make my own bread. Yeah. I don't need anybody else's crumbs. That's correct. You know what I'm talking about. Um. But I, I, it, the thing is with me is money ain't everything. It ain't everything. Right. But money I, ain't a thing. Jermaine Dupree, I think, said that. Money ain't a thing. Money yeah. ain't a thing. Yeah. I think that, I don't know, but Tom Brady has made so much money. I just don't know that I'd go back into a broadcasting booth. I don't know that. He I'd, loves football, though. Right, I guess yeah. he lives. He I lives and breathes it. Him, yeah. And if he's not going to play, play it at that level, I don't. I don't know, dude. Honestly, if I made his money, I might just walk around punching people in the face, right in the face. And I'm not even violent. You get out of jail right away. Yeah. Over COVID, overcrowding. Scientists reverse death, bring dead eyes back to life. I don't know about this. What do you mean they brought the dead eyes, dead eyes back to life? I'm confused. I think somebody was brain dead and they, they got the eyes to respond to light again. The discovery oh, that, I, wow, this is crazy. So you said, okay, eyes taken from organ donors five hours after death responded to light raises, responded to light raises the question of whether brain death as it is currently defined is truly irreversible. Interesting. So you're saying after the brain has been declared legally dead, the eye still responded to light. Yeah, like zombie kind of stuff. Yeah. That's very, 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 very wild. If you guys could opt out of death, would you? Opt out? Yeah. Like it was a mailer? Yeah, you want to Only opt out? if my family could opt out as well. I wouldn't want to live without loved ones and, fa- and people I know. That's fair. Yeah, I don't want to outlive everybody. What's the no, point I that I don't want to do. That I don't want to do. But if you knew you weren't going to die, would you even care about your cholesterol? No. I wouldn't care about my cholesterol. Because you're not going to die. It don't matter. Your cholesterol is high. It's hard to get high cholesterol. What are you eating? I've the red meat. Red meat, but I've had high cholesterol. But I've had I've had high cholesterol since I'm ten. I had high cholesterol as a ten year old. Oh boy. really? Yeah. Oh, that could be maybe dangerous. Yeah, and but my blood my blood pressure is high too. But it's always been high. mine too. But it's it, but Her red. meds. Yeah, but the meds make it low, or it's still higher than a average. I still feel like it's still kind of high. Like not like it could be a little higher than normal. But it's not always. It's not always. It's not always. Yeah, it's never. It's not always like right on the button or anything. I don't know. I'm talking to my doctor now about possibly switching the medication. Where are you going to switch it to? (laughs) This is so funny. It sounds like we're at an old age home. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know nothing about meds. But I did want to tell you that I want to talk about the Mandela effect. Talk to me about the Nelson Mandela. Effect. Yeah, from from before. So remember we were talking about how that thing about how you how you can believe something because you could remember the last version of what you s- stored in your brain. So you right. start remembering memories, and they they do. They- so I I saw I leave here today. I thinking back to this time two weeks ago. Two weeks from now, I'm thinking back. I'm remembering your shirt was black, but in, in fact, it's navy blue. But in my head, I'm remembering it's black. As that memory goes on, you had on a black shirt in my head, not a navy blue shirt. Yeah, or like in the 40 years from now, you might be like, oh, we were, we were here that day, and who else was there? And it was 
someone I don't know I don't know but but you've heard of the Bernstein Bears thing you've heard that right no do you know the Bernstein you have do you have Baron do you know the Bernstein Bears they were a big cartoon and uh, oh yeah b- book series book series yeah, of the Bernstein kids. Bears yeah the they had a cartoon Bears. and everything okay. Okay, I used to get those books all the time from Scholastic and stuff. Okay. Like, the Berenstain Bears was my shit. Okay. Okay? There's this phenomenon where people remember it, large groups of people. So that's the Mandela effect, when large groups of people agree that they also remember something a certain way, and it was never that way. So okay. Berenstain Bears is, it, it, oh, there's 45 examples? They People thought it was spelled one way, and they swore by it on the books, and it was spelled a different way. See, so people thought it was spelled like, but everybody, like, like thousands and thousands and thousands of people, swear that they spelled it one way, and it was just never, never correct. And and all these people, like I know for a fact, all these people, like it's actually a thing. Sex in the city, sex in the city, and sex in the city is a big one. I always thought it was sex and the city. These are, I, I no, these are that's not real Mandela effects one. The Berenstain one is. Wait a minute, go back to that go back to that King Henry the Eighth one. What's the problem with this one? Turkey leg. Oh yeah, well that's this just is bullshit. a joke. That's just different interpretations. Monopoly guy. Oh, did he not have a monocle? Nice. That's that's awesome. You know what that's called, a monocle. You knew it. I know, but I feel like I would have to think about what is that called again? But you monocle was on the tip of your tongue. Like it's almost like you used you've used the word monocle this week. I haven't, but I just know what a monocle is. Like every time, ten out of ten, you monocle immediately. I don't I don't forget that monocle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, monocle. well anyway, that that's the Mandela effect. I thought it was more gonna be more interesting for no, sure. No, it is it is interesting though. Could could you could you oh okay, that's another that's another big one. That's another big one. That sh- I think Shaq or so one of the most well-known ones is a collective memory of a movie called Shazam, which Shaq that was starred in. actor comedian Sinbad in the nineties. I thought that he, it, I really thought that that Sinbad was in Shazam, and he wasn't. It was Shaq's movie, right? No, that's Kazam, I think. Oh, so who was in Shazam? Click on that. Click on that. I don't know the Mandela effect. No, but it'll say it in the article. No, she didn't. Now nah, that's the new Shazam. That's the new Shazam. Yeah, go, we go back to that. Go back to that actual link. Shazam Sinbad. What is Mandela effect? Where? In fact, no such movie exists at all. There was a children's movie called Kazam, and some other coincidence that could help to explain how this movie became created or remembered in many people's minds. Wow! So there was never a Shazam with Sinbad. It was Kazam with Shaq. Yeah, but why do we all remember Shazam with Sinbad? I don't. I don't know. Well, there is, and I know I, I don't know if we've talked about it on Chrissy Chaos or if we've talked about it here on Hey Babe. The the MK Ultra stuff is also huge, where the CIA was manipulating many people's minds with MK Ultra. Like, what is MK Ultra? MK Ultra is um, mind control that the CIA proved that they could do, and a lot of people think MK Ultra is being used on people at different points in their life for different reasons. Isn't that like the end of Zoolander, that kind of thing? Yes. It's like brainwashing techniques. The LSD, the drug LSD was created through M- M- MK Ultra, which was, was the code name of an illegal human experimentation right. program designed and undertaken by the U.S. Cent- by the CIA. Is, are you serious? Yeah, MK this Ultra. This stuff is, is real? MK Ultra is a real thing, and they, and they developed procedures and identified drugs such as LSD that could be used in interrogations to weaken individuals and force confessions through brainwashing and psychological torture. They A lot of people think the conspiracy is that Charles Manson was under the influence of MK Ultra, and that's why what happened happened. And he's like the CIA scapegoat because it was an MK Ultra experiment gone wrong. I don't know if that's true, but that's a conspiracy. I've never out heard there. Of that. Yeah, don't you kind of think social media has a vibe? This kind of vibe it does have a vibe of that, where it's like, where it's like, you you know, you're under the influence of like this, you know, like even social media even getting trapped. I mean, do you realize how and it's happened to me many times. I'm sure it's happened to people at home. How someone's comments on this fake app that I don't know at all have hurt me and like ruined my day in real time where I'm like, I don't even physically know who you are, but somehow you got inside my mind. Mm. It is like a mind control mm-hmm. 
thing where you're right. like, I don't even, you could live in a different part of the world. I don't know who you are at all. Right. And you got inside my head. Yes, yeah, wow. It, it doesn't seem good. And this MK Ultra stuff, allegedly, like they have, they CIA says they stopped it, but a lot of people think they haven't. But who were they administering it to? They were trying to do, this was like Cold War stuff, I believe, and like, you know, kind of like for America's enemies to like be able to control their brains. But who were they testing it on? Was that's, it, wasn't Manson one of them? That's what they said. Charles Manson could have been one of them. And they think other groups of people, like they think they tested it on people unknowingly. Like that's people. Why. Oh, you got to be kidding me. That's what they think. The thing is, here's the thing. Here's the thing what I've watched, what I've learned about, you know, just doing research and watching YouTube and all that stuff and blah, 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 is, is we also, the United States, I am a patriot, baby. Make no mistake, I love this country. But we are have a state-run media. We think, you know, you, you say, oh, North Korea's got a state-run media, and they, so do we. Yeah. They put forward exactly what they want you to know in here. Oh, you have to deep... De deep dive into the internet to find out, well, here's actually what, there's a lot of alternative theories onto what America just put forward to you. So this is one of those things where like a lot of people believe it. Ha yeah, one project, MK Ultra, got underway in April 1953. Experiments included administering LSD to mental patients, prisoners, drug addicts, and prostitutes, people who could not fight back. So they just gave them LSD. And saw what happened to him. And a lot of that stuff out of the Nuremberg Code, which is, you know, the code that was made after, you know, all the Nazi crimes, they think that a lot of this stuff was happening in the Holocaust. That is why I read a book called The Nazi Symbiosis that pretty much said the reason why the United States and the Western powers did not intervene immediately when they found out about the Holocaust is because the Nazis were getting, like, trying out all types of crazy shit on you know, the Jewish people in the Holocaust, that they were yielding kind of like some results on certain things that the Western powers were like, wait, what can we learn from this? Let's let them do it. And then they only intervened when the, they stopped yielding results and Hitler just started like killing everyone. And, and uh, you that's when they intervened. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what this theory, alternative yeah. history says. LSD and other drugs were often administered without the subject's knowledge or informed yep. consent, a violation of the Nuremberg Code the U.S. had agreed to follow after World War II. The aim of this was to find drugs which would bring out deep confessions or wipe a subject's mind clean and program them as a robot agent. Holy goddamn shit. Yep, yep. In midnight... In, in Operation Midnight Climax, yep. the CIA set up several brothels within agency safe houses in San Francisco to obtain a selection of men who would be too embarrassed to talk about the events. The men were dosed with LSD, the brothels were equipped with one-way mirrors, and the sessions were filmed for later viewing and study. In other experiments where people were given LSD without their knowledge, they were interrogated under bright lights with doctors in the background taking notes. They told subjects they would extend their trips if they refused to reveal their secrets. The people under this interrogation were CIA employees, U.S. military personnel, and agents suspected of working for the other side in the Cold War. Long-term debilitation and several deaths result from this. Heroin addicts were bribed into taking LSD with offers that of more heroin. That is insane. Yeah, that, that, he, but it never went away. Epstein continued this. Yeah, this that's is what, still going on right now. That's what I'm. That's what they think is like a lot of this Epstein's Island stuff and a lot of stuff like it's they pick and choose. It's kind of like control efforts by the government to control people at the highest levels. They say, basically, hey, you can tell all these secrets that you know or use your money to do this or do that. But if you do, we have videos of you having sex with an underage child type stuff. And then when people go against the grain or whatever, the videos are released, the hammer comes down on you for whatever things you may have done. That's conspiracies out there is that when you get to a certain level people start to become like you know because sometimes you wonder why does this person or this athlete take this stance or why do they do that when they know it's wrong and it's it might be because well the powers that be whoever that are have a lot of kind of dirty laundry on you you would think there's an illuminati i don't know if there's an illuminati i i do though think that there is certainly I would almost say 100% a group of people 
way higher than presidents, people that we've never heard of that are not on any list, that don't want to be on lists of the richest people in the world, that will never be, that probably can't be, that do pull strings of, that I'm not even, I'm not saying our the politicians even know who they are. Right. But I'm, I think that it's happening. You just think there's people more powerful than the, we the know. The fact I, that Ghislaine Maxwell is doing great, like nothing's happening to her, is crazy. Yeah. She's just fine with hard proof. Yeah. Well, she's still in prison, though. Yeah, yeah, but, but she's, she's not never going to get sentenced. She's never going to get... Yeah, she'll get... She'll get what like, do you mean drunk. she's never going to get sentenced? It keeps getting... Everything keeps getting pushed. I, I mean, and the amount of human traffickers that keep getting caught and no one reports it is terrifying. Like, there's crates of children in the middle of the country. Right. Like, there's footage of it, and the news just doesn't... It's right. a really weird thing, man. Right. No, it's... Well, um, this took a turn. I know. It's... Uh, you ever see the... You ever, go ahead. Well, no, I was just saying, like, the, like, like there's also this thing called the Havana Syndrome, which is, like, uh, um, different members of, you know, the government and military, they'll just get, like, like all of a sudden out that worked in around the Havana, Cuba area, started getting, like, these intense, like, buzzing in their brains, mm -hmm. would almost have, like, stroke-like symptoms, and it happened to all these people, and the same things were happening to them, and they all worked in the same companies, and had a note, and they think that their brains were being controlled or something was implanted in them that they had all these people had knowledge of a high level thing wild and they all got the same thing they all got the same stuff oh, some of them wow. some of them and it happened in u.s soil too and it happened in US soil. No, some of them no never movie recovered about that? no movie about this i'm sure there's one being written. like this is an ongoing like 2017 like this is ongoing this right is judd apatow's new movie is it going to be about <laughs> yeah. Pete. yeah um you ever yeah. see you ever go to the bodies exhibit yeah Fascinating, right? That was down by the South Sea Seaport. Yeah. And you know who they were. Well, that's what I was going to bring. There was a controversy with that too, right? Yeah, because they, Speaking, yeah, they were homeless people that passed away, right? No, or, they believed that they were they were um, they were Chinese slaves. They believed that they were they were they were. Oh, I I had read that they were unidentified Asian, like homeless bodies. A lot of them were Asian, and that that it was a controversy because they didn't have the right to right to do that. But you're saying. They, they were saying that like it was in parts of China, like it was Chinese s slave bodies. That's what they're saying. But from when? I don't know. Like I guess that time. Yeah, where did the bodies from the exhibit come from? Are all Chinese men and women provided by the Dalian Medical University plantation in China? Uh, yeah, so they they don't think that it was like on the up. And so, up. They, oh, so, so that's but that's just a straightforward answer. There's no controversy there. Well, yeah, but it's the it's it's you know. Well, the controversy is nobody's checking in on that company. Right. I mean, this has been going on since the beginning of this country. Remember Benjamin Franklin told us they would grave rob in Philly, like, constantly? Yeah. Benjamin Franklin. We went on with Benjamin Franklin impersonator. We took ayahuasca. <laughs> talk to I, I, honestly, remember, I was like, how much weed did you smoke today? Yeah. So in I haven't smoked in a month. Oh, really? Yeah. Right on. Wow. There you go. Did you go through it a little bit? Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. I couldn't sleep for weeks. Insomnia. You couldn't sleep for weeks when you, when you stopped smoking weed? And then weed? there was a day I just started vomiting. And oh, you think wow. for sure that was withdrawals? Oh, yeah. I think insomnia, I, I, I would say, yes, sweating and stuff at night. No like edibles dream, either. My dreams are terrible. Headaches. Only that one time with you. Headaches. For the first two weeks, it was like, I'm like, what is wrong with me? Yeah. What's the reasoning, you think? You stopped doing it. Just I always, like, after, like, a couple years, take, like, six months off just to... So you'll do it again eventually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Why not? I'm going to be bored of everything again, yeah. Right, right. But just for now, why not? Why not? Yeah. Um. So, um... um they Benjamin used to, Franklin. Yeah. Benjamin Franklin used to rob graves. The uh, uh, not Benjamin Franklin. The colonial people used to rob graves, and then they would just use their body for science. So the thing is, it's it's inhumane and it sucks. But you don't have certain types of advancements in science or all this stuff without kind of because back then people the rules. weren't donating their bodies to science back then. Yeah, or they were just like. You know, well, he was saying the commoners were robbing the graves and selling it to the medical schools. Selling it to the and medical, and then it led to new <laughs> graves being built. Like grave defenses, right? Oh, like better, like more yeah. secure graves. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's um. I could I could use the coffee myself, babe. I rock my Peloton. At Honestly, least if you're a person that doesn't have a Peloton now, like, what are you even doing? <laughs> like, what are you doing? I love Peloton because it is fun. It's communal. It's motivating. It. I love that you can just the music selections and and the instructors. You can. 
peg who you like and yeah. put them in your favorites and you take their classes along with other people. It's you just best. feel like you're part of a community. It just is invigorating. It doesn't feel like you're just in a room alone just spinning your wheels. They got cycling, strength training, yoga, running. It's not just the bike. And you're more likely to stick to a workout routine you enjoy. So Peloton makes every class fun. So it feels like you're hanging out with your friends. If you're in the mood for a ride full of club bangers and EDM run, yoga flow class with soul music, whatever you want to do, Peloton's got it for you. Um, oh, and you know what I like about it? it? The quick ones. 10 minutes. That's 10 my, minutes. That's, where I, that's my wheelhouse. No upper intended. body stretch, or, you know, you do it in between calls, whatever. It's, it's you could do a 40-minute run. You could do a 10-minute session. It is really fits your, your needs. Uh, it works with your schedule, whether you have five minutes or an hour. Plus, you'll never have an awkward encounter in that locker room again. Never, ever, ever. You could get on your Peloton butt-ass naked. It don't matter. Right now is the perfect time to try our Peloton. The Peloton Bike Plus is now $500, 500 less. less. It's the best price yet including free delivery and setup and there are more game changing prices available on the original peloton bike and peloton tread visit one peloton.com to learn more upstart baby if you got high interest debt and all that stuff you got high interest credit card debt. sometimes it's hard to see the end in sight that zero balance it's just hard and upstart is the place that can help you out they have upstart has powered personal loans that can help you pay down high interest debt all online. High interest with, credit card debt. High interest credit card debt with simple and easy to understand payment terms. Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. You want to pay off credit cards. You want to consolidate Get that financial independence. Don't ask. It's, it's hard to ask other people, too. Yeah. Take, take control into your own hands. Yeah, and you could check your rate in minutes for loans between $1,000 and $50,000 without impacting your credit score well they know that even more than just a credit score so rather than looking at your credit score alone upstart model yep. considers other factors like your income your employment and other information provided in your loan application don't wait and <laughs> check your rate today at upstart.com slash hey babe that's upstart.com slash hey babe to check your rate today do not forget to use our url to let them know we sent you loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application go to upstart.com slash hey babe. you can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting the loan whoa upstart.com slash hey babe slash hey babe oh wow yeah i mean you know it's um i could i could use the coffee myself you could use the coffee yeah something something i don't even know if it does anything to me coffee my father drinks coffee at night isn't that weird? Uh, yeah, they so have I'm a saying, coffee I, before bed. Yeah, I, I don't know if it does anything for me, actually, to tell you the truth. But I'm saying all I need is I can use a pep. A pep you you ever take a five-hour end? I haven't taken a five-hour energy in or drank a Red Bull in 15 years. Yeah. You take those? No, but What's I... What's the last time you had a Red Bull? I used... Nah, I, I, I mean, I don't even know. Like, When's the last time you had a Red Bull? Pip? Incidentally, maybe. In, it had to be with a vodka at a party, and I didn't know. Is it. Red Bulls are their numbers going down? Because I don't know anyone who's drank a Red Bull in a long time. Yeah, I don't know. No, dude, Red no Bull they sponsored that Space Jump. Remember? <laughs> How great was that? Um, no, I um, I uh, I took it. I, I I used to have it on my rider. Okay. Because I just I'm so I'm just so to tired. have a five hour energy or to have a red. A five hour energy. Okay. Like in case I just like got. What you know, does that feel like? I never done one of those. Yeah, it's just like it's, it's. I assume it's like coffee. You know, it just like really? can potentially just kind of get you going a little bit. I don't know. I, I only would do it in desperate situations, but I I did do it. I remember it. when my cousins drank three Red Bulls and had to be rushed to the hospital. They had to be rushed to the hospital. Yeah, it made like a heart. Like your oh, heart. Sh three? Yeah. People in the clubs, nightclubs, when that was, I don't know if it's still a thing, but people used to have 10 plus of those things all night long, Red Bull. Some people are more sensitive. I don't know. Jasmine used to work at Sound Factory, an iconic no nightclub way. in New York City. Yeah, she was a bartender at Sound Factory. No way. You know what she told me when she was like 21, 22? She used to work at Sound Factory, and in one- I, I've went. What do you think she made in one night as a, as a bartender, not even a bartender- at the on the main room, the bartender downstairs that was pretty much only giving out, she said, water, water. sodas, and Red Bulls. Because everybody was because everybody was, was on so ecstasy. fucked up. What do you think she made in a night? And she was like, I'm, I'm positive I made that number. What, just take a guess in cash as a 22 year old girl I in one it. night doing running the water, Red Bull, and soda bar. Well, I'll tell you right now because if people are on ecstasy. And they're not spending all that. Oh, they probably charge 10 bucks for a water. But people are probably in a great mood, generous. Yep. They go to her. She gives the watch. Everyone's, I don't know if you've yeah. ever been to it. She's a, hot, hot uh, Spanish yeah. girl. A nightclub like that, though. Have you, have you ever, did you ever go to a nightclub when it was, that was all the rage and like everything? The tunnel and all that. I yeah. missed all of all it. All that limelight did you tunnel. you do all that? I went, went to all of them. 
Wow. And it was crazy because everybody in there was on that. If you didn't do it and you walked in, you'd be like, yo, what is going on? Like everybody, it's not like they were like tripping out or anything, but it's just everyone's drinking water and it's like best friends. Right. It's wild. Like there was a while, there, I, a year maybe, a year where I used to go all the time. And you got to a point where you can go to a nightclub in the city alone and show up and know that you would know like, Literally does like going into comedy club. Dozens now, so of people. It's the same comedy thing. Club, yeah. You see the same people that you spent nights with already. And you so show what up. clubs would you go to in the city? All the iconic ones. All the limelight ones. tunnel. You have memories. Palladium of all of them. limelight tunnel. Uh, 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 sound factory. None of them Th- are there anymore. Those are my big ones. No. Is there even an iconic nightclub now, pimp? That people go to. That I asked this of? recently, I and I found out there ki- there is still those types of clubs in the city. Well, we. We I'm just so grew out of them. I have no idea. Like, I don't hear them in the conversation or anything. I think <laughs> I'd love to see you guys there now. <laughs> we should just pick should we the do a live club. From there? I heard a marquee. Marquee is marquee. Yeah, marquee yeah. Isn't I've been that, to. That's 15 years old already, isn't it? Yeah. Like, it's not yeah. like a thing. Like, would you ever go to a nightclub now on like it's a Saturday? It's so night? unappealing. The, the only time it ever happens is if I'm on a road and a night like a, a nightclub in that area reaches out and says, "Come by for just a, we'll give you a section, we'll give you a bottle like that, like that." And that's been even years. Maybe Vegas. I, I don't right. even know. I don't we know. Went, we went in AC. That was fun. That was okay. That was probably the first time I did that in. I'm going to say eight years or something like that. I don't know. That like, I love fun. that the first time yeah. you went was at the height of COVID. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. No, but we, we it was just like we were, at, we were at Borgata, and we had this whole section afterwards, and then the, they came in and were like, oh, we're fans. We got this nightclub over here. Just come over, and we'll give you some bottles. And yeah. So when we thinned out, we were down to like 10 people. We're like, should we walk over there? Yeah. And we did, and it was like was old. Nice. It was like old school. It was like we were sitting around just drinking, laughing, and stuff. So what? What do you think she made? I think she made so in one night. <laughs> I know that she made. I know it's thousands because even me, my best night bartending ever, and that was at a local watering hole, as looking like I do, was twelve hundred and one dollars. So my guess is she did a full shift. I bet you she she came away with what two grand, five thousand dollars. I was going to say she made it one night in cash. She was her rent at that time. She had a roommate. Her rent was one hundred and fifty dollars for her rent, and she said she only spent because she wasn't really eating that much. She was doing drugs at most a month, another three hundred dollars. She said her cost of living was no more than five hundred dollars for one month. She made five thousand dollars in one night. That's because my first gut instinct was five, and then I said that's insane. Then I brought it down to twenty five, and I still felt guilty. Then I knocked it down to two. She said the upstairs bartending girls would easily, easily make seventy five hundred dollars in a night. Friday night seventy five hundred. Saturday night seventy five hundred in cash. It was packed. Yeah, it was, and you, there used to be a thing with people leaving that that worked there. They they wouldn't leave till the afternoon because it could be dangerous for them to leave. Why? Because like, the cash they have on them. People knew that. I've heard of people try, getting robbed. When you're leaving, you know, that the, uh, when you're a bartender and you're leaving at night. Did I ever tell you the fat story Fat Joe told me about the c- club? Did I ever tell you that? Did I ever talk about that on the podcast? It doesn't ring a bee. When with Jasmine t- called Fat Joe an Easter egg? With the tunnel. When Jasmine <laughs> called Fat Joe an Easter egg was <laughs> a 10 out of 10. What? Jas- the very, I mean, I, I the second date I ever took Jasmine on, I, I was doing a, host, hosting a baseball show called Off, Off the, the Bat. Bat with Fat Joe. Yeah. And I took her to a Fat Joe concert. And we got in the green room, or whatever, hanging out with Fat Joe. And Jasmine was drunk, and she and he, Fat Joe was wearing a light blue suit, a light blue velour suit with light blue Jordans. And Jasmine's drunk, and she goes, "You look like an Easter egg." And he goes, "Whose bitch is this?" <laughs> no, I swear to God. And I was like, "Joe, I'm sorry, it's uh-huh. fine." He goes, "She got to get out of here." No, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. And then we just went, and then Jasmine doesn't even remember that. She doesn't remember it at all. She's like, "I didn't call him an Easter egg." I'm like, "We were thrown out of the green room." Oh no, because she called him an Easter egg. But Fat Joe told me a story. The tunnel, okay? Mid-90s, when the tunnel was like, maybe this was that's 19... What, that's when I was there, man. Like, so sometime between 93 and 95. Yeah. It's Fat Joe I and, was there like and Big Pun. Yeah. Okay? Height of everything. Oh, big pun. Fat Joe and Big Pun. He's telling me the story. Fat Joe and Big Pun. They Bobby go to the Quan. tunnel, and he said, at the tunnel, yeah. at that time, there was a bunch of people that would wait for, you know, I yes. caught rappers, athletes, whatever, to come in Jack. and they would rob their chains, yeah. right? He said, so Fat Joe and Big Pun are walking in and they somebody puts a gun to them and they're like, give me your stuff. And he said, Big Pun was no, like notorious, like not a bitch, like I ain't giving you shit. Where Fat Joe was same thing, strong as fuck, but he was like, yo, just let's give him the move on. 
and Palm was like, I'm not giving you anything. I'm not giving you anything. And they had the guns to them, like, for sure would pop off. He said, out of nowhere, all of a sudden, you hear some commotion outside, and you hear, he said, you hear a voice. He goes, who fucking with my man, Punth? Who fucking with Punth? It was Mike Tyson. <laughs> Punth? <laughs> Mike Tyson. No. Walks in, he said, these gangbanger drug dealing criminals with guns to Facho and Mike, uh, Facho and Big Pun immediately put their guns down and run away from Mike Tyson because they were terrified that Mike Tyson was going to beat the shit out of them. And they got into the club. So they had no intentions of shooting then. Hung out all night. But he's like, that's how powerful Mike Tyson was in the early 90s. He literally, him, he, he, his body was a, a weapon. Right. It was wild. He's still terrifying. Still terrifying. Could you imagine being that guy getting punched in the face? No. By Mike Tyson on that plane? No. I, I honestly, honestly, I think I hate that guy, just yeah. his face, the yeah. guy who got beat up by Mike Tyson. I hate him. I think I hate him more than Bin Laden. <laughs> <laughs> I think I hate him. Well, yeah, he, I hate him more. He was, he's a, he was. Yep. Just an, there's no way anybody likes that guy. He sucked. What a dick, right? What a dick. And dude. Fans like that. We look, I can't believe that's all that happened was a scrape on his forehead. I, I know we spoke about it on a previous episode. but I know. I think we we'll talked about this too, but remember that kid that got on a plane drunk and he was like screaming like, my father is worth more than your whole life. And they duct taped him to the, they duct taped him to the thing. <laughs> and for the rest of the flight, he was duct taped to the chair and people were just filming him and mocking him. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what, whatever came with that kid. Yo, that was I saw thing. something that I've truly never seen. In my life, growing up in New York City, and, you know, it's easy, you know, people make, you know, you know, all these neighborhoods, like uh, these deep Brooklyn neighborhoods, whatever, like, oh, you're racist, this is racist, whatever. Yes, fine, it all exists. I, I promise you, growing up in New York City, not once in my life did I ever hear somebody intentionally, in a hurtful way, try to use a racial slur at somebody. I never heard it, for real. Like, you know, I've heard people mess around, do jokes, whatever, but I'm talking about intentionally, like what you see in a movie, never not once in my life, until two weeks ago, I was outside a comedy club, okay? The security guard, who we all know very well, black guy, white guys, walk, drunk as shit, not even at the club. At this, cellar or? Yes, yeah, comedy cellar, walking. Who's this? Who was it, Steve? King. Sean? King. Yeah. The big guy. Great guy. Who, there's a bouncer at, at the comedy cl comedy cellar. His name is Stephen King, which is why that's his actual real name. So Stephen King, and and he's sitting there, some guy, drunk white idiot, stumbling by, not Ugh, even online son. at the comedy cellar, not even online. Okay, right, just a drunk. He reminded me of that guy in the Mike Tyson thing. Just a Ugh. dumb, hateable face. Yeah. Right, he's walking and then tries to get into the club. And do some, uh, I don't, you know, whatever. And then, you know, King's like, you know, get in line, whatever. And he's like, I had a ticket, whatever. Just, and he's like, all right, move on. And then he tries to walk in again. So King physically has to be like, move away. That's his job as a bouncer. Man. And then the guy stumbles back. He goes, you put your hands on me. And King's like, move away, move down the block. Like King had enough, which a man, even I had enough five minutes before that. Right. And King go, and the guy goes, you're going to push me. And he yells the N word at him. Oh, right. God. Which was Wild, wow. shocking, where in front of a line of 100 people. Wow. Where then King says, I'm going to let that slide. You're drunk as shit. Just get out of here. Leave right now. You're drunk. Get out of here. And literally was like, just get out of here. Right. So he's stumbling around the guy. He's not moving. King's just looking at him. He's like, get out of here. Like, Actually, you yell that out right now on that block. You better look out. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's, it's, uh, it was crazy. It was like, so then a few seconds go by. And, and the guy goes, I'm still here, N-word, to him. So then King's like, this motherfucker crazy. So with that, he goes to start to walk towards the guy. One of the managers from the club stops him. He's like, do not get involved. Do not get involved. Like, you've shown amazing restraint up until now. I don't even know how you did that. Just, I will take care of it. The manager's a white woman. The manager then starts to walk towards that Who guy. Who I know? Liz. Okay, yeah. yeah. Starts to walk towards that guy. Like poetic justice you've never seen. That guy takes one step to try to get towards the line. Face plants face oh. first into the concrete. Blood gushing no. everywhere. His orbital bone broke. His eye was hanging halfway out no. of his face. Yeah, halfway down his face. No. And everybody in the line started clapping and laughing at him. And I was like, 
good. Holy Honestly, shit. Good. Because wow. it's like instant calm. The thing is, when you get that drunk, like people who can't hold their liquor like that, it just bothers me. What a terrible it person. It just bothers me because, like, you know, I've never done that. Like, it's a scum of uh, it's scum like, of it, the earth. If you could get that drunk to where, like, you, you, I mean, you're gonna get. Oh god, oh, it was. God. I've never seen it. I've never seen it in my life. But with that, you can check us out on the road. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with that, right now, uh, on sale right now, I have uh, Milwaukee, Minnesota, Rochester, Syracuse, Hampton, We're out Hampton there, baby. Beach, uh, and then the new ones, Vegas, Boulder, Colorado, uh, Phoenix, Seattle, Portland, and Vancouver, all on sale right now, SavileCountyComedy.com. And me, you can go on Netflix, watch my comedy special, Special Weshi. I am out in Providence in July, and then I got uh, La Brea Comedy Club in Los Angeles area, uh, the Brea Improv in the Los Angeles area at the end of August, and then more dates coming up uh, in the first week of June, christycomedy.com for Tiki Wikis, and uh, yeah, man. That's it. Oh, this is coming out in, this is the, Go so this weekend I'm in Rochester and Syracuse. Go to Rochester and Syracuse, and don't act like that guy in the line, or else your eye socket's going to fall out of your face. There you go. Rightfully so. And this has been Hey Babe? Yeah, I just came back from Rayo's. <laughs>